Hello everyone, and welcome to the channel. My name's Janos, and today we're going to be taking a look at an old and relatively obscure animated series called Samurai Pizza Cats. I only happened to hear about this series after Fabio randomly texted me the theme song with zero context late one fateful Tuesday night, and after witnessing its craziness firsthand, I thought it'd be fun to share with all of you. By the way, if you're new here, please consider subscribing, and if you're coming back, thank you so much for supporting the channel. Now with that out of the way, put on your robotic samurai armor, grab a slice of your favorite pizza, and let's get started. Samurai Pizza Cats, or as it was originally known, Kyato Ninden Teande, is an anime series from the early 90s, which follows three ninja cats who work in their city's local pizzeria. When they aren't delivering piping hot pizza pies, the trio spend their time fighting crime and protecting their city from the government's corrupt prime minister, Kitsunezuka Kun no Kami a fox who constantly tries to overthrow the Shogun. The anime was pretty short-lived, and ended with a total of 54 episodes and a relatively unsuccessful reception. However, it was soon picked up by the American company Saban, and adapted as a 52-episode cartoon series for Western audiences. Now, incredibly, when Saban licensed the English version of this series, they had no proper translations of the original scripts whatsoever. And you may think, oh, that's okay, they probably just hired a few translators and took it from there, right? Well, no. The team decided instead to write their own 100% original dialogue, based solely on what they could infer from the animation. This decision took the tone of the original show in a completely different direction, one extremely reminiscent of those various abridged series you can find online. In fact, in a way, you could consider this the first ever abridged series, and it aired on national TV. Now, for the rest of this video, I'm going to be poking fun at this show, but it's important to remember that the writers were clearly not taking themselves too seriously, and all things considered, they actually did quite a good job with what they had. Some of the dialogue is genuinely funny. My brother, are you alright? Mm -hmm. well, it really depends on how you choose to define alright, little sister. But if you're asking if I've learned to find meaning in the enigma which is life, the answer is yes. Good. Hmm and the use of 90s pop culture references, fourth wall breaks, and self-aware humor certainly make for a more interesting series than it originally was, in my opinion at least. Also, the theme song is kinda a bop. It's super goofy, but after listening to it a bunch of times, I'd be lying if I said I haven't been quietly singing it to myself throughout the day. Samurai Pizza Cats. Anyway, first things first, I gotta talk about the name. The series' original title translated to Legendary Ninja Cats, so I'm not sure if the change to Samurai Pizza Cats was due to a genuine misunderstanding or an attempt to more obviously frame the show as a parody of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, a series that was very popular at the time. If I had to guess, I'd say it was the latter, or at least a mix of the two, as Samurai Pizza Cats references TMNT in the theme song before every episode. It also takes a dig at our heroes in a half shell in the first episode, implying that the Samurai Pizza Cats are their hip, new successors. An entire city block is flattened at the blink of an eye, including a retirement home for aging Ninja Turtles. Oh dang, shots fired. So what about our main characters? Are they named after famous renaissance musicians or something? Well, not exactly. Our main cast consists of Speedy Ceviche, Polyester, and Guido Anchovy. I honestly have no idea what they were thinking with these names, like, okay, Guido Anchovy. He works at a pizzeria, so he's named after a derogatory word for Italians and a common pizza topping. I get that. And Speedy Ceviche. Uh, I mean, ceviche is still a food. It's not a pizza topping, but maybe they're going for a seafood theme for whatever reason. But then we have polyester. Polyester! She's the only one with a pun for a name, and it doesn't even make sense. Polyester is a type of synthetic fabric. What does that have to do with pizza? They could have at least named her Polly Pokey to maintain the seafood theme, but... Ugh, I digress. Also, I gotta say, I found it very strange that all of the animals are part robot. At least in the original version, they mention it in the intro, referring to the creatures as animaloids. It doesn't really explain anything, but it at least acknowledges why they look the way they do. 
but in the English version, there's no mention of it whatsoever. So it's pretty jarring suddenly seeing things like rockets emerging from a character's head because, other than instances like that, the fact that they're robots is completely inconsequential. So, to really get a taste of what this series has to offer, let's take a look at an average episode. I'm going to go with episode 9, Double Trouble for Princess Vi. The episode begins as always, with our good friend the narrator setting the scene. He lets us know that the Pizza Cats are hard at work preparing for the 50th annual Arts, Crafts, Fireworks, and Pig Out Festival, where hungry customers will soon be swarming their restaurant. Meanwhile, Princess Vi is coming up with a brilliant disguise so she can explore the festival amongst the common people, without being recognized. It's literally just this pair of glasses. Yes, this disguise will do fine! I can go to the festival! Mingle! Do lunch! It's funny though, the writers actually missed a joke from the original script here. In the subbed version, you can see that the princess's assistant is actually fooled by the disguise, but in the dub she's just acting this way out of concern for her safety. Fashion photographers say when they see you like that. <laughs> they won't know who I am with these glasses on. The chief palace guard, Al Dente, is understandably not okay with this, and decides to assign the pizza cats to find and protect her. However, this conversation is overheard by one of our antagonists, Jerry Attrick, who reports back to the Prime Minister, who in this version is referred to as the Big Cheese. Now he is supposed to be a fox, but I think the American writers thought he was a mouse. Big Cheese then comes up with a plan to locate the princess and slip her his, um, special powder that will make her think she's not a princess, but an unemployed dentist. She'll wander the city looking for cavities to fill while we take over the treasury. I actually love this. In the original version, they're just trying to wipe her memories. But this idea of making her think that she's an unemployed dentist is way more original. And once they do, they plan to replace her with an imposter who will do their bidding. Now, back at the pizzeria, Al Dente briefs the pizza cats on the situation, but they're hesitant to help because without enough staff, people will go to other restaurants during the festival. Tell them about the Cocker Spaniel, Guido! Oh, you mean the Cocker Spaniel who opened up the designer hamburger stand? Uh... So, Al Dente agrees to work at the restaurant while they're out looking for the princess. Then we get this crazy suit-up sequence where the pizza cats are loaded into these huge bullets and shot out of a giant revolver. I have no idea why they made this thing look like a gun. It could have just been a generic cannon, but eh, I guess this way it has more personality. At this point, Princess Vi is out exploring the festival, and happens to meet up with Lucille, a recurring love interest character for Speedy and Guido. Here's a clip from another episode for context. Darn do anything for you, Lucille. To other people, you may just be a hand-painted animated character, but you mean a lot more than that to me. There once was a beauty named Lucille. His pretty puss could make a pussycat real. The two head to a restaurant together, where one of the Ninja Crows, a group of bad guys employed by the Big Cheese, spots her and attempts to drug her with the special powder. But, luckily for our princess, the crow used powdered sugar by mistake. Back at the palace, Big Cheese and Geriatric meet up with Big Bird or Big Bert. It's kind of hard to hear what they're saying. Come in, Big Bert! But this is the guy who transforms into the spitting image of the princess. He then, almost immediately, forces Big Cheese to drink a weird bubbling concoction and throws him in a pond. I no idea what the point of the scene is, but there you go. Then, out of frustration, Big Cheese explodes, which is something that happens in every episode, kind of like a Team Rocket's blasting off again thing. Also, this is the Emperor, Fred, who is literally insane. Fred! Meanwhile, Speedy notices Lucille and Princess Vi attending a play. Tonight's presentation is the musical version of Tennessee Elliott's classic, Cats on a Hot Pan Pizza. And while watching the performance, sees another ninja crow attempting to shoot the princess with a dart laced with the special powder. Speedy then causes a distraction, allowing the two to unknowingly escape. Having lost track of her, the pizza cats regroup and call for help using their cute little bell collars. So naturally, General Catton shows up. Now, there's a few of these backup cats that come to help out every now and then, including General Catton himself, Bat Cat, Meowsma O'Toole, and Spritz T Cat and they each have their own special abilities that help them bail out the pizza cats when needed. It's a little weird, but I guess they're just here to add some variety. Anyway, 
General Catton decides to draw a crowd by creating a fireworks display, hoping that the princess will come to watch. At this point, the ninja crows have filled a firework with the special powder and launch it above the crowd. However, General Catton is having none of it and knocks the firework right back towards them. Does anybody need some x-rays? The Pizza Cats then locate the princess and bring her back to the palace, but upon arriving, they meet the princess's impersonator. I thought this would turn into one of those, oh no, which one is the real one situations, but no. They figure it out pretty easily. Who are you? Princess Vi! No, you're not! Prove it, sister! Let's see a credit card! A princess doesn't need a credit card! Are you kidding? How can you go shopping without a credit card? Then there's a brief fight scene where Big Bert copies the Pizza Cats, but Speedy somehow just beats him with his magic Ginzu sword. And that's pretty much it. Big Cheese gets upset that his plan was foiled and explodes again, and the episode ends with the Pizza Cats chilling on a bridge as Al Dente frantically delivers a pizza in the background. This episode is a good showcase of the general formula for the series. The Big Cheese comes up with an evil plan, and the Pizza Cats stop him. From what I've seen, it doesn't get a whole lot more complicated than that. But this simplistic plot structure is actually what allows the writing to shine through as well as it does. Now, Samurai Pizza Cats is probably not going to be many people's favorite series, or even in their top 10. But that said, it will almost certainly make you laugh every now and then, and should be appreciated for the unique piece of animation history that it is. I'm not aware of any other official anime dubs with completely original dialogue, and even if they exist, it's certainly a rare occurrence. I think it's pretty clear that the writers had a lot of fun working on this series, and, as they so eloquently put it in the show's outro, so, yeah, I think that'll about do it for this video. What did you all think? This is my first time doing a video exploring an old and obscure animated series, so please let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please take a moment to leave a like, and subscribe if you want to see more videos similar to this. It would help out a lot, and I'd really appreciate it. Anyway, stay safe, have a great day, and I'll see you all later.